Welcome to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Today is January 14th, 2019. Uh, my name is Sophia, but I use Steve as a nickname. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm Oliver, I use he, him, they, them pronouns. My name is Jules, and I use they, them pronouns. Today's topic is how to be a good ally. Um, and I think that we should start out with um, a more positive side of things. <laughs> Um, Your show is very negative. We should switch that around. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so <laughs> let's talk about um, what being a good ally looks like or feels like to us. Mm -hmm. So the ideal ally in our brain. Exactly. Like an ideal world, what would the ally look like? Right. Okay. Oliver. All right. Um, You're going to start. I think, <laughs> I think what makes a good ally, some of the, there's a few like key things that you need to be to be a good ally. I think you need to be very understanding and willing to sort of learn and grow whenever people are like correcting you on stuff or whenever you learn something new, um, you just have to like be able to go with it without being offended or thinking like it's about like you making a mistake and like apologizing over and over. Like just be understanding, learn, grow, move on. Um, and I think like making sure to be an ally unconditionally, like not just when it's convenient for you, but always like sticking up for queer rights. Um, that's very well said. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but definitely, um, just thinking about the fact that you don't need to make us feel bad if you um, do something incorrectly mm. or say something incorrectly. Just you know, just understand that you need improvement or need to fix that and carry about. Um, it's not a bad thing to need right. improvement. And yeah. y if you're an ally, you need to be actually supportive. So <laughs> showing support is um, key. And so don't just like label yourself as an ally and be like, I don't hate queer people and then never actually do anything. Like yeah. you have to be actively supporting your queer exactly. friends, family, the community as a whole. Yeah. And you can't, you can't have certain things that you're okay with and not be okay with some things for example like being okay with um gay men and lesbian w like women and all of that and but not being okay with like the uh, idea of a trans person so that's also something but i won't say anything else because everything else is negative so <laughs> another really important thing for allies and like a really amazing thing to see is being like an educated ally mm -hmm. and like knowing a lot about this community and knowing like your like not like your role in it but like the importance of like you as an ally and how important they are to queer people and just being mm -hmm. an educated ally yeah and i think we touched on this so we're not a good thing about being an educated ally and something that really anyone should know is that in the acronym all things uh, LGBTQIA, what the A stands for. <laughs> yeah, so it does not stand for ally. Fun fact. <laughs> Allies are amazing. You're so amazing. Mm. Thank you so much. But you, unless you are not, not cishet, you are not in the queer community. Yeah. That is what the acronym is for. But I think people need to understand that like a lot of the people who like make the whole the A is for ally argument or like you should be inclusive of allies in your community like a lot of those people are really just looking for attention and looking to be like called a good person and praised and all of that whereas they're not really helping us because if all you're doing is like talking about what a great ally you are and like saying that you should have like a place in the acronym which is not the point then like you're not actually helping queer people you're really just distracting from the actual issues that are going on. Plus, the acronym is already so long. <laughs> I have to, like, spit it out every time. I, went, I was once complimented on how fast I was able to say it, and I was, like, get a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that definitely not just the A, but um, other things. If you are not... Um, in that acronym already... It's not going to be added because um, it's, it's for so the queer community, and I don't know. So yeah, I think I sh we should like that's a really good point. But we should also clarify that what like what we mean by that is not that if you're like pan or Absolutely. something like that. Like Absolutely. like the point is that 
you, if you're cisgender, heterosexual, hetero-romantic, you're not you're part not of part the of community, community, and so you're not going to get, like, you shouldn't be making an argument for getting, like, some extra letter added or, like, making your case for, like, why you're part of the queer community. Like, if you're cisgender, heterosexual, hetero-romantic, you're just not. Right. You're just not. <laughs> Along with not. the argue for having the S. That's put the in word. there for straight. What? Um, that was a thing. That is not a thing, actually. I understand people so. like wanting a sense of community, and like I do understand right. that. But they're also they're not oppressed. But they're not <laughs> being oppressed, <laughs> they don't and need they're it. not being like, I don't know. They're they don't have issues for just being alive. Like this isn't. Yeah. I mean, some of them might. Well, right. Absolutely. But it's not but like but in not terms of gender and sexuality and, and, and like, all that. Yeah. yeah. So. I think, I think that. I think that's. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Again, the acronym is yeah. so long, you guys. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. <laughs> I guess kind of this kind of was briefly mentioned already a little bit, but being an educated ally is very important. If you call yourself an ally, you must be educated. You must know about the community. Even if you just Google it, which isn't always the Google's answer. Google's free. And it's a great resource. Indeed. I don't offer to do. I'm sorry, but I had Indeed. to quote that real quick. Mm-hmm. Not sponsored, but it's okay. <laughs> Google, oh, please yeah. sponsor us. I think that another thing, like, it's so important to be an educated ally, and like, you have to know a lot about the issues you're talking about, rather than just like supporting stuff or just like making a statement every once in a while. Like, we should stand up for like this community's rights without doing anything. Like, that's just not helpful. So you need to be able to educate yourself on that and also like educate yourself on your place as an ally and like your privilege and mm-hmm. like educate yourself on how you can use your privilege to help other people rather than like pretending you're part of the community because you're not but I think maybe we sh- like we should also mention that that doesn't mean you can't want to be an ally if you don't know things about like the queer community like you can you just shouldn't really label yourself like an ally and talk about it all the time if you don't if you're not educated but like if you want if you're coming from a place of like ignorance or you just you've never heard anything about queer people but you want to educate yourself then like educate yourself and you can become an ally so you don't have to be like like I guess what I'm trying to say is we shouldn't make it seem like it's unachievable like unattainable just because you have to be like super educated so like don't be intimidated like there's still good allyship from people who aren't super educated, but the, the goal is like work towards that. I mean, and the goal is to make like, essentially everyone an ally by educating them. Yeah. That yeah. is the goal of like a lot of things. Like this is the goal to make everyone an ally and everyone feel good by educating people, mm-hmm. even right. though we are not educators. And I even think <laughs> that like, <laughs> even if you, <clears throat> it's not our job to educate you, but we can help like it's we're not most of us I at least I'm not trying to speak for everyone but if you would like some information I am glad to talk to you about it like I have so many pamphlets I don't have all of the knowledge um but I will help as best as I can because if it means that there's going to be another ally then I'm all for it Mm -hmm. so seek out that knowledge it's Mm -hmm. really good it's like you it's Seeking out knowledge in general is just amazing. Like, it's what you should do. It's the goal of everything is to be more knowledgeable. And like, if you're questioning, seek out knowledge. If you want to be an ally, seek out knowledge. Just do that. <laughs> just learn. Yeah, like if you talk to queer people, a lot of queer people are willing to have conversations about stuff, or like will respond to a polite question. But at the same time, like it's also important to consider as an as an ally that like queer people aren't just like your dictionary and one queer person doesn't speak for all of them so like if you come to me and ask me some question about like trans women of color like I can't speak for them because I'm not a trans woman of color so like I can't I can't give accurate information because that's just like not my point of view so like I'm not speaking from the point of view of those people so I, I can't speak for them so I think like understand that just because someone's part of the community doesn't mean they know everything about it so don't always rely on, like try to get a diverse set of people to talk to about the issues, I guess. I think we touched on that pretty well. And I think something we can talk a little, Steve? Sorry, I just had one more. Um, oh, go ahead, thing. sorry. Um, I think that 
just don't take the easy way out in just asking one person like do your research if you actually care if you don't care then don't mind like so mm -hmm. that's all but something we can speak on more personal level and more a better perspective is allies in school so mm -hmm. teachers administration mm -hmm. and students i think yeah that and parental allies could be kind of one you can definitely kind of topic so so I let's think. go with that one then parental allies yeah how to be an ally as a parent if you're like your child comes out to you mm -hmm. what do you, what is the best course of action and how do you prove that you are an ally to your kid um i think not using um but as much like i support you Ooh, but yeah i Just i like understand word. but you are great but like it's not yeah you by using your words you're not gonna change or actions honestly if you I, I don't know what you're into but if what that's not going to change um, their thoughts or way of life mm -hmm. like it's not your choice yeah it the only thing you can do if you want them to stay around is support them and mm -hmm. be um, knowledgeable if you can, mm -hmm. even if you just treat them like they are, which and is... I don't want to think you should treat them any different. Well, yes, but... But also, like, you shouldn't treat them any different, but also, like, if they're in need of, like, a lot of queer kids are going to be in need of extra support, like, that's mm -hmm. something yeah. that you should take into consideration Definitely. so don't just be like oh yeah like we know you're queer that's great whatever and like disregard it and be like oh I'm treating the same as like my straight child because mm -hmm. like Equality. you have to like offer them the <laughs> support like it's more about like one point that applies to a lot of situations is like equity versus equality yeah. so like mm -hmm. if you give your your straight kid and your queer kid equal treatment that's not necessarily fair what whereas like if you were treating them with equity, then maybe you'd just like mm -hmm. give your queer kid a little more like support in terms of like their identity. In terms of their identity. I think in general, always give your kid as much support as you yeah, can give. And also there are scenarios where you would, you should treat them the same. Yeah. But in certain scenarios, it's, it's yeah. important. As a, and f as a kid who has come out to their parents, I think for, for me, the best course of action that like the best outcome that could have happened was them literally just going like, okay, mm -hmm. okay, I don't care, go yeah. clean your room. That, that's like, for me personally, that'd be the best course of action. Like mm -hmm. as a parent, if a kid ever come out to me, that would be my goal to how my, I would mm -hmm. like to be able to react. Mm -hmm. hopefully. I, I think, think a lot of people like, the way the world is right now, like in the future, I feel like that's ideal mm -hmm. and or that just like coming out as a concept isn't a thing, but also or that everyone like, has to come out. That like you that some parents I think some kids feel like when they come out to someone and then that person's just like, Okay, cool and like just moves on it. with the conversation is a little bit dismissive mm -hmm. and like and like not really um, acknowledging them enough. So I think some people like if they come out that's like a really difficult thing to do and so like I think some people feel like yeah. you're sort of dismissing all their like bravery mm -hmm. and everything by just like saying, okay, that's that's whatever. Like I don't really care. Yeah. So I think it's it can a, be taken different it's ways. Tricky, yeah, it's, it's a tricky thing to yeah. deal with, especially it's hard to navigate. immediately after the coming out. And yeah. then what about being a frontal ally a few months, few years after they come out? Mm -hmm. What would be like an everyday kind of ally thing? Mm -hmm. I think the most the immediate one that comes to my brain is what like whatever they ask you to do pronouns name you just go with it you just yeah. do it I think one thing that like a lot of family members specifically like friends and whoever else too but like parents a lot of the time um, take things super personally and that's something that you <gasps> shouldn't do like and that applies to coming out of course like that means that like if you if your kid comes out to you don't like talk to them about like oh this is so like hard for me it's like no you're there like they're the ones struggling but then also like it applies to other situations so if your kids like hey like I would feel more comfortable if you called me this name then oh, that's so not like 
they're talking about, you know, like, oh, it's so hard for me, or like, just they're sentimental about it, and they're like, oh, like, I picked that name for you, like, you know, this means so much to me, and it's Getting, like, like war flashbacks. It's, it's something that, um, that means a lot to me, and or like, it's a family name, whatever. Like, it's not a personal attack on you or your family There's or your values or whatever. It's just like your kid feels more comfortable like that, so you shouldn't take it as a personal attack. There's, and I think that applies. Yeah. And like those years feelings too, I think like like of like names or pronouns, like I feel like those feelings that you just mentioned are like valid, like yeah. feeling like oh you shouldn't be talking to your kid about you that. You shouldn't be talking to your kid about it. Like, They're definitely talk to your valid feelings about that. To have. But like talk to your spouse if you have one. Like those are valid feelings to have. Or your therapist in yeah. private, like not that is not your decision. It it's not a choice. Everyone should have a therapist. Right. I'm sorry, I don't you, but everyone, get a therapist if you can get a therapist. I think it's just like really parents helpful. need to understand, or just like everyone, but I think particular parents are the people doing this a lot of the time. You need to understand that like you don't, you shouldn't be talking to your queer kids about like about the how difficult they're making you, your life. Yeah, like that's something because like never be telling parents kids, go to oh, their you kids. Made my life so difficult. Yeah, even if they're not queer, don't say that. Yeah, it's like, not a good thing to say to your kid. <laughs> but like as a parental ally, you shouldn't be going up to your like if your kid says something. Or complains about something or whatever it is or asks you especially a lot of the time this happens like kid asks their parent to you know like hey do you think you could try a little bit harder with the pronouns or like correct other people and then the parent goes like you know do you have any idea how, how hard, hard it has been or like how hard I'm trying like how much more difficult our lives have been like they like, take it they, so personally they guilt trip you and they give you all the like reasons that you should be so thankful to them and it's like it's not about your kid being ungrateful it's just about them asking for the support they need so i think that's it falls in the category of like taking it too personally but it's also just like you shouldn't be dumping your problems on your kid regardless of whether they're queer or not and I, it's it, it shouldn't make a difference whether your child is yeah. straight or queer because it if if you if you're before your child came out to you, you assume that they were straight i'm sure is, and okay mm-hmm. we can write about that for a while um and then they, if they asked you then told you they needed support, you'd give it to them. But they tell you that they don't want to use the same pronouns anymore or they don't want to, like, have crushes or, like, date the same gender that they have been. It's an issue. I don't, I, I just am not a fan of that concept because it, it shouldn't change. It's not your business really even. It's... They're just telling you so you can be a part of their lives and you should be thanking them for that That's because it is hard to do. And you don't, un- you don't realize until it's in the moment that you're doing it. And like, it's, it's not a fun time, but when you do it, it's no matter what the outcome is, it usually feels a little better in the moment. Yeah. And you the only the best you can do is continue to give them support. So it's like nothing happened, but you're still acknowledging the fact in a positive yeah. way if that makes any sense. Yeah, I that don't makes know. Sense. That's really well said. Oh, well, you were talking about guilt tripping. Mm-hmm. And my friends all enjoy ranting. And I all enjoy listening to their rants. And I had a friend come to me and rant about their family member who had guilt tripped them by using the example that they had bought them pants instead of a dress and I I was hearing this and I was like you clothed your child congratulations yeah no parents use all sorts of like anyone do they just use these weird excuses that I'm like that has nothing to do with this scenario it's like just because you gave someone whatever support it was whether it was a lot of support or whether it was just like you trying and even not doing so good like whatever it is like you shouldn't be using your support against your child like it's your responsibility to care for your child and if you like are guilt tripping your child by saying like well I give you this so like I don't know why you're so ungrateful like that's just ungrateful. not ungrateful I that word that's a word that queer kids get a lot and like oh my yeah. god you as a parent like, so like as he was saying like you should be thankful that your kid told you this because it's so hard and it's like because they'd be like lying letting to you. you into they'd their lives. Yeah. I don't want your kid sharing. lying to you. Would you rather have them live a lie every single day or would you rather them, like, be happy? Because they're – I don't – I just – I just don't understand why it is such a big deal. Like, it's not changing them. 
they your kid is still the same they kid. have been queer while you they have thought like they're now. straight and cis whatever you treated them just fine when they were when they were queer and they've always been queer yeah your kid isn't changing they've always right. been this way but when they realized it, anyways, gender might be changing depending on how they right. identify but it's not it, it it doesn't change their personality it's not because well, queer isn't a personality trait exactly people need to stop using that because it is not a personality trait it can be how you express yourself absolutely but i mean odd is a personality trait but i think also that like yeah. some people like i had people i had like a friend tell me after i came out to them they were like this is weird like you it's weird your personality me. has changed like over the course of like a week because before you were saying all this stuff about like I don't know like whatever that they considered like feminine or something or me blatantly oh, yeah, stating like, that I'm not trans well, and then maybe, like I but, but maybe you were lying about, like they're talking about like my personality changing but it's like if you feel like someone's personality has changed like you should consider the fact that like maybe it was because they were like overcompensating for being closeted because they felt like they needed to maybe this you know is their like real personality yeah, being like able to show real through now being revealed and then coming like becoming more comfortable in themselves not mm -hmm. like them changing personalities because of like something they read or something their friend said yeah. like you need to realize that this has been like a gradual process and that they've thought about it a lot it's not mm -hmm. just like a sudden change and it's acceptable to not like someone because of their personality it's not acceptable to not like someone because they're queer because queer isn't a personality trait and ch the change could be them feeling more free and oh, it's a the sense of feeling. relief and a sense of self-expression. Like, that could be a, a shift. It's not a change. It's a shift because they are e expressing the person who they were exactly meant to be. And that is not anyone's thing or place to judge. Yeah. So I don't – I like – you're saying it's it's not a personality trait and it doesn't change your personality but i believe that it is a very freeing thing yeah. and it can mm -hmm. absolutely you increase your state of mind which mm -hmm. is wonderful i think yeah because it's not a sickness it's which like i hear a lot it's they're not irregular they're happy like <laughs> Yeah, if you think they've changed rapidly, it's because, like, coming out has, like, it, it changes people for the better. And, like, Most there's likely. there's also a lot of, like, stigma about, like, you know, how you can't change a lot. And there's a lot of, like, like we were just talking about, like, they haven't changed. And that's true. But also, like, if people have changed and if people were very sure that they were straight a few years ago and now they have just come out to you, like even if they were sure themselves and it wasn't something they were hiding and they just like changed and grew and learned from that like that's completely valid too like you don't have to have been like I didn't know I was trans for my whole life it wasn't something I've been hiding since I was like two years old like it's something that I realized and I don't think I would have been comfortable like expressing myself like that when I was like a little kid but like people's like gender is fluid and sexuality is fluid and whatever like you can change and grow and you don't have to have been mm -hmm. the same your whole life. If someone didn't change at all their entire life, their personality didn't change, nothing changed, it'd be a little weird. Yeah. Like, like if I be... remained a one-year-old, like a personality of a one-year-old my entire life, it's a little odd. A little be odd. Something's so a little odd boring. Like you would Or just not... like really entertaining. Yeah. Yes. But. One of the two. It would be the same thing. Mm -hmm. It would be the same thing for your entire life and who would want that mm -hmm. so we may have gotten a little sidetracked that's okay it's, it's okay, okay. this is a good it's conversation it's a productive it's conversation. Good, it's a productive knowledge conversation. here you go but here's your knowledge <laughs> seek it out but the allies in the school community yeah i know you can talk about okay. this and i want to listen to you talk about this Okay. So please talk about this. Okay. <laughs> Administration, <laughs> teachers, and students. Yeah. So and friends, which is kind of like students. that kind of. Yeah. Peers. Yeah. Like school peers. Peers. Yeah. peers. Um, I think that people don't always understand how super important it is for teachers to be good allies and like for the school to be a really accepting place because there's a lot of like, like 
teachers or schools or like administration, whatever it is, who will just like there's these stickers. I don't know if, <gasps> if they have. I don't know how many schools they have those at, but it's just like a little sticker that has a rainbow flag and it says like I'm safe an space and like yeah, I'm an ally. And so like they put it like teachers will put that on their doors. <sighs> they but think then, that makes them an ally. And they, they're like, okay, this makes me an ally. Like I guess my queer students know that this is a safe space now and like they'll be fine like that's good enough but the reality is that like you have to you have to earn that and you have to really support your students and like listen to your students and a lot of that is just like recognizing that that, like yeah and like recognizing that you can't like it's it's a lot like I think being an ally as a parent in that like you shouldn't assume a default about your students so if you're having like a class discussion for instance about Ooh. queer rights mm. a lot of teachers like sort of organize that as if it's as like so everyone's straight yeah as if everyone's straight and it's like a fun debate that you're having and it's like in reality you're fun probably topic. like hurting a lot of students in your classroom because you almost definitely like you you definitely have queer kids in your classroom you probably have some trans kids in your classroom and you need to be in able Montpelier to support anyways. them in Montpelier anyways yeah. really <laughs> okay. but, but just like um so those discussions, right? Mm-hmm. When I, before I was out, I like I had a, a suspicion that I was queer, like a little thought, and we had like discussions like that, and I was like, okay, who will probably hate me? Yeah, it's like I was like looking around and I was like, okay, you, you're probably gonna be fine with me, so I'm gonna talk to you. You probably hate me. That's cool. I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, it's I like, can like figure it out and like weed out for the, the for a lot people. of for the like teacher if if the teachers cishet and for the cishet <laughs> students it's just like a topic to discuss and maybe you can like tie it to some current events or something like whatever that's great but you're probably not noticing that there are some comments being made that are hurtful and like you need to be really educated about those topics as a teacher so that you understand what's going on in your classroom environment because if students feel like they're you know like if a classmate makes some like yeah. homophobic comment or joke and it's just like it's maybe it's not noticeable to the teacher but the queer kids in that classroom immediately recognize like okay like I'm not necessarily safe around that person if the teacher doesn't recognize that and learn to understand like how students communicate that then it's going to be like not a safe space so you can't just like slap the safe space sticker on your door and call it a day and it's not like you have to get a huge rainbow flag and I mean you could (laughs) you could but you just need it to make show in everyday better. life that you With can people like support this. this. Yeah, and like it's another yeah. thing is so like I did this. Uh, yeah, I have a question for you before we quickly change topics because this is a question that you just said. Um, say a kid makes a homophobic comment in class and the teacher recognizes mm-hmm. it. What should they do? What should their reaction be? Should they call it out or should they just let it slide and not draw attention to it? So I what? think what? Yeah. yeah. Can, yes. <laughs> what should um, they do? I think that I've like seen this happen before, and I've had teachers who have had different responses to that. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. I think the best thing to do there is be able to call out the issue Glare without victimizing, without victimizing or like publicly shaming the person. Yeah. So a lot of the time, like, like you don't want to just let it slide and pretend it didn't happen, but you also don't want to be like, hey, like you just said a really awful thing, and this is why. You're wrong, you and also, like now yeah. let's have a whole class discussion about how like what a terrible person you are because like one that takes that away person, class time, two you're shaming a person. Well, like you're shaming a person, and I think then students that that also like takes a little bit away from that person's chance to like learn and grow. And I'm not trying to defend mm-hmm. students who make homophobic comments, but I just think that like it's more productive as a teacher to like say, hey, like that comment wasn't so good, and here's why, and then explain like the issue and have some Mm. students talk about it in like an organized and civil manner because otherwise oftentimes like it'll turn into a interaction outside of class or it'll just turn into a bunch of people yelling at each other because if you call the student out and talk about and you know call them out like you said this terrible thing and like how could you say that then it turns into just like a bunch of yelling and nobody learns anything. Mm -hmm. Or someone resulting in getting you know hurt in some way not yeah. doesn't have to be physically it can be like emotionally For or sure. like verbally like like that's it's th- know your times like pull someone aside after class if they've made a homophobic comment 
in front of pe anyone really even if like just mind your surroundings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which could also lead into another topic but we don't have to do that like coming of that soon eventually after this conversation we should talk about confidentiality but mm -hmm. yeah for sure there's but some more things we should add one final thing for yeah that. absolutely mm -hmm. uh that uh I also want to talk about name change after. Yes, definitely. I um something that has been voiced to me by teachers and stuff is they don't want to like turn the whole class into that, mm -hmm. like into that discussion because they do have things that they need to teach. Like if yeah. you're, a, if you're, a, I don't know, a Latin teacher, you're not gonna want to turn your entire conversation into how to not be homophobic, even yeah. though ancient Rome was kind of pretty gay. <laughs> yeah, I think. But like, going Steve's off like of, what? Going off of. Wait to get to high school, though. babe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I think going off of that also, like, you should, as a teacher, be able to prioritize. Because I think I've had a lot of teachers in the past who are, like, as soon as you get off track, it's like, nope, we're bringing it back to the lesson we were studying. And Let it's like, talk. That's, that's not always the right thing to do. So that I've had, learn. like, in some, in, some, in some situations, it's really, like, your students are getting off track and the conversation just isn't productive in any way. And it makes sense to lead them back. But if the your whole class is having a civil respectful conversation about queer rights or if it's a not so respectful conversation that you can turn into like a learning moment for the whole class then like if you really think about it like that's just as important if not more important than whatever subject you're teaching so you should be able to prioritize and just like let go a little bit mm -hmm. and be able to say you know like mm -hmm. okay let's talk about this because this is probably going to really affect some of the students mm -hmm. outside the class and even if it's like if if there's something that you don't understand, you can even learn about it. Like it's yeah. not like you can, even yeah. if you're a teacher, you can still learn mm -hmm. Cause about this. Because like, just because you're teaching people things doesn't mean that you can't learn things yeah. at the same time. So you I can always say just like about to say that is oh. that a lot of teachers. Sorry. I get, I was talking about this with a bunch of other queer students and teachers and all of that, and teachers voiced the concern of like. I don't know if I can properly talk about that and teach that in a school setting mm -hmm. because they assume they have to be the teacher, which, like, yes, it's your job, but, like, learning from your students. A like, a parents, bit. parents, learn from your kids. Teachers, learn from your students because yeah. learn from the people who can talk a little bit more about that topic so that next time you can feel more comfortable talking about it and what you're saying. I think that, like, teachers who are willing to say, like, take a step back and just say, okay, I don't know as much of this t about this topic that I'd like to, and then you can just say, you know, like, I don't think I know enough about this for this to be a productive conversation and either let your students take it from there or if that, if you feel like that's not going to work depending on, like, the age group or the particular group of students or whatever the conversation is, you can also just be like, I don't know enough about this right now. I'm going to research it. We can talk about it, whatever, like, next class because you don't want to just, like, admitting that you don't know about the topic isn't, an excuse to just be like okay to let's just remain avoid ignorant. the topic like like use that to learn i think so you want to go into confidentiality or I think, name yeah, changes first wait we can even talk about like both at the same time cause name changes and confidentiality yeah. cuz yeah. in the school system even Dang, confidentiality right. is also important um, cuz if yeah i don't know we can yeah. you if can continue student, to talk about name change and then kind of segue into confidentiality because the two are very Unless a student expresses that they don't want you to sh or yeah. they will come back to that. Unless a student is like, okay, you can share this, that's fine. Maybe yes. you can talk about this with other people, then go you ahead. But or if, ask them. Even. But if they don't explicitly say you can share this, don't share it. Right. Base rule, but let's go into name changes first yeah. and then yeah. we'll connect the two yeah. in yeah. a casual Just manner. Putting that in mind while we talk about this. So I should I talk about like what should happen or an example of I, what shouldn't so happen because I've had maybe experience. a little bit of both would be actually okay. really good. I think <laughs> honestly out of the two of us you're definitely out of the three of us you're definitely the most experienced talking about this. Yeah. I haven't changed my name. <laughs> I don't think Steve's changed my name. I kind of anything. have but not officially not, not officially because yeah, it's I, a like, nickname, I'm Jules so. and you're Steve both nicknames but right like here. but so. you're all that's your yeah. last name. Oliver. Oliver <laughs> Jacob Simon something. Um, so jo Jacob Jonathan Simon. So many middle names. It continue. Okay. Um, so I want to start off by mentioning a way that you shouldn't do it because I want to be able to talk about like why that's wrong. Because a lot of teachers are like, okay, here's like 
a student talking about how they want to change their name, I guess this is the logical course of action. And yeah. sometimes that's just wrong, even if you have good intention. In this case, the person didn't, but yeah, so it's fine. To clarify, how we're talking about changing your name in the school system, yes, not legally. Not legally. Because on your on like on your birth certificate, it still says your dead name, correct? Yeah. But in the school, you're I'd like on roll call, it's all over, correct? Yeah. So how did that come? Okay. To pass. So, I also want to maybe like mention how to go about that first. Well, how old were you? Like were you in middle school or high school? I was. It would have been like. 13? Yeah, 13. 8th grade then? 8th grade. Yeah, 8th yeah, grade. Yeah, it was 8th grade. Um, I remember. So, <laughs> you remember it. Oh, the tea. It was a process. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so let's spill that tea. The first thing I did, I think I talked to my, There was, we had a really great social worker at that school. So <gasps> Bless them. Um, I'm going to snap because. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's man. really important also, how to be a good ally as an administrator in school. They're Make sure, sure you example. have really, really supportive um social workers who are so really good. supportive and educated about queer topics because that's that woman. super important. I love that woman. But, Continue. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> so I had a really, we had a really great social worker there. So I talked to her and I was like, hey, I want to change my name in the school system, but it's not changed legally. Like, how do you go about that? So they were able to change my email, first of all, and then mm-hmm. change. There's a slightly more complicated process for in your, changing in our your school. name in, it might be different in our, in our school, school for changing your name in like the online system because mm-hmm. um, you need like uh, parental school? permission and stuff and so and it's 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 a process yeah it definitely is a process so I couldn't do that at the time so I was gonna have like the rest of the school year without my name changed in the system and that so pretty much at that point it's like up to like I'm le- relying on the teachers being supportive so I went to my teachers. Your and mental like health I literally riding them. on that. Yeah. yeah, like I emailed all my teachers and told them all about, like, and for students who want to do this, like if you just email your teacher, you're like, you're like hey, I want to change my name like this. Please don't if tell they're my a good parents teacher, if you they'll don't probably want them to. change it. And then they can help you, like, figure out a way to let other students know and figure that whole process out. But um, what happened with this teacher is I told him I was changing my name and I told him that in the next class period, like, that was going to be my name. And the way I wanted it to happen, because I think in, like, ideally, this would be a super smooth way to do it, is, like, just change your name on the attendance sheet. And then the teacher calls your new name, and you answer to that. And then everyone in the class is like, oh, oh okay. that's your name. Like, that's your name now. And if they have ideally, questions about it, like. I, that was yeah. ideal, but what happened? Yeah. So did like, that happen? No, that did not happen. So yeah, I have teacher, a feeling. The teacher told me that my so I was like okay can you please call my name on attendance as Oliver and he was reading the sheet of attendance he walked over to me whispered Oliver and I was like I'm here I was like you don't have to whisper and so I talked to him about it afterwards and he claimed that like (laughs) that must have looked so weird (laughs) that me changing my name was going to be like an interruption to the class and that it was going to get people off track and I just think that, like, teachers need to recognize that that's not what's important. Like, it's not important that you get your extra, like, 10 minutes of your algebra lesson. Like, it's more important that your students, students don't care seconds. about algebra. It's, it's literally, literally 30 seconds. It was more disruptive because I had to, like, I was like, now I'm talking to you in the hallway. And I made him come out in the hallway with me but, and lectured him on why he's being stupid. But imagine how weird that would be, too. Like, during roll call, if you get to your name, all of it. And then goes back to doing <laughs> yeah. roll call. Like there's a convenient like they walk, way to do oh, that. They walk to your desk and like knelt down and whispered. So I definitely want to like. Oliver. For, you look insane. Like for teachers who are wanting to be supportive of students changing their names, I think what you need to do is I think I know like who that meet was. with your student um, if they're not sure how to go about it. And you can like, you can do it by um, like changing their name on the attendance list and just calling it. Or if it's like, a bigger class or whatever like whatever reason that doesn't work then you can also have them like talk to the class and organize a way for them to tell the class that's not like super intimidating so that it can be mm-hmm. not really a discussion but just like a welcoming space and establishing that so like I had another teacher who did this really well who like came up and like talked a little bit about like trans issues like queer issues and all that and just like how to be accepting and how to be a good student ally and then like gave it to me to talk about my name change and I think that's also a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. 
So, but like, ultimately, it's up to the okay. student, so don't force your student to do anything they're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I actually have three things that I had devised as you were sitting there, as you were talking. One, the social, the social worker you mentioned, tip for, for any, like, so, not that any social workers watching this, <laughs> but tip, she was also one of our GSA advisors. Yeah, yes. that's great. So we'd already, any queer kid already knew, she's an ally. She's an amazing that's woman. That's good to know. Yeah, and... Another thing for, like, you're talking about name pages and roll calls and all that, mm -hmm. and I personally was super lucky, because my birth name is Julia, and Jules is obviously, can, can be a nickname of that, mm -hmm. so literally, and I don't care if I hear the name Julia, because mm -hmm. I'm just so used to hearing it, so like, literally, for roll call, like, a sub's calling my name, they go, Julia, and we go, yeah, Jules, and then we just move on, Yeah. and that was, like, I understand, That's like, like your name was a bigger shift and all of that. Yeah. But, like, if anyone wants to just switch to a nickname that's more gender neutral, it's literally, I was, yeah. it was a little uncomfortable that's a good at first. first step, though, because then people are used Because you did that for a little bit. You had, like, a but tradition like, name, right? Yeah, but, like, I think a lot of, for a lot of people, that helps a little bit because if you use, like, a nickname, you can either pass it off as a nickname and just have it make you more comfortable without, like, coming out about it. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, like, here, this is my name, this makes me more comfortable for now I'll be changing again in the future and then people are used to like they have a chance to adjust and call you by a new name so then they're not like it's not a huge deal when you like find your mm -hmm. new name and the thing is too like I'm probably never gonna legally change my name from Julia it just seems like a big hassle and I probably would never do that on my birth certificate and I'm told and I will probably always ask people to call me Jules. Like, that's probably always what I'm going to be doing because I like that. It's gender neutral. So, like, I, the legal thing was never, like, a huge deal because I can just easily nickname it and be like, oh, this is what I like to be called. Mm -hmm. And I had a third thing. If you remember, I said three. Your name is now changed in the school system, correct? Yeah. What was that like? Did you need parental consent legally? Do you need parental consent to do that? In our school system. I don't know how this works elsewhere. Is it a legal I thing? I don't know. know if it's like a federal It's not a legal I'm not a thing your school district. Yes. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how that works for different school districts. For ours, I just had to bring in like a signed note that said I could change my name. <laughs> I got a note to get in a gym class. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm queer because my note. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, I can't participate today in class. I quit. I'm queer. It's um, nope. yeah. It's I'm not. I haven't experienced this, but I've I've taken lots of time to do research on how it is with other schools, and um, um, it's very uh, it's a process that's very different in other places. So. I think that we actually have it in like an okay yeah, thing because our we're really lucky in our school our system. Our school system yeah. is like we're not sitting here trying to complain about our school system. No, because it's at so all. good. Some of mm, most some of the teachers, most and some of the some of the, yeah, some like of the individual people yes. could like yes. So like no, the school, that but the school in general all together <laughs> is so good. <laughs> MHS, you just wait, baby. <laughs> you wait, you get to MHS, best school <laughs> in the world. It's, but okay. it's, okay. Lovely. Um, <laughs> confidentiality. Um, yes. Speaking of which, you just exposed what school we go to, so. We're it's in Montpelier. We're in Montpelier. <laughs> they know we're in Montpelier. They know we're freshmen. That's true. They, it's not that hard to figure out. <laughs> confidentiality, which yeah. we touched on a little yes. bit. If your student, like, ha okay, we touched on how to kind of weird, do weird confidentiality by whispering their name in their ear. That's, that's but also not confidentiality, confidentiality when people though. don't. Being, I guess being secretive when people don't want you to is really annoying. Well, being as, secretive like, so if you're trying obviously. to be an ally, but then you're like, oh, I just want to like make sure you're comfortable when they like specifically asked you but to also, have a group discussion. It also makes you feel like something you need to hide them. too. If it's yeah. secretive, yeah. they like encourage that you need to be like secretive about this and like hide this. Yeah, even if though you, you don't. Yeah, if they you told to you to put your name out there on roll call, that's like. That's that kind of a message. Not asking, that's <laughs> not them asking to, for you to keep it confident. That yeah. is literally them telling the you opposite. to do the opposite. Yeah. Like all of them going to the teacher being like, you need to yeah. call me this name now. Yeah. It's not, it, call me this name on roll call in front of the class. That's not being like, oh, I'm just telling you this so that when, I'm, when I do potentially change it, it's not going to be a shock to you. Don't yeah. tell anyone right now. It's, just, it's literally, call me this but in front of everyone. Shock about like confidentiality in the ways that it should be done. In the ways that it should be, because again, we're very negative people. 
Are we talking okay. about like in school or just generally? Generally, but that includes in school. Because um, we're in school and my it's seven hours. thought of the All moment of um, that All is, um, actually it doesn't just have to be for that. If So we've been to some events where we are surrounded by all the gay people. It's fun. Um, <laughs> we love it's it. It's such a good time, but there is a thing with that. You, it's not, it's not the best thing to do um, in front of like a group of people to go up to them and say like, yeah, hi, like you can still say hi to them or maybe not, like check in with them mm-hmm. after. But if they're with a big group, maybe avoid doing mm-hmm. that because there could be some questions raised like how do you know this person like yeah, oh so yeah I met them mm-hmm. here and that's something that because there is everyone has a different situation which mm-hmm. um, it could be many different things it could be many different things in fact like all of the things but um, I mean yeah so mm-hmm. don't need to get into that specifically but Um, Just being aware that if you could maybe just send them like a message or something like, hey, slide into them DMs. Okay, Um, (laughs) it was really cool to see you today. I hope we can catch up sometime. Like, whatever. You just have to be aware of um, Mm -hmm. the situation, whether even if you don't know it, like just. Be thoughtful and ask people who they're comfortable with you talking about. Like, yeah. And before and, you leave mm-hmm. this event, you can even ask your new friends, like, hey, yeah. whatever. So, you made new yeah. friends. Um, so there's an organization that does that confidentiality super well, Outright Vermont. Mm-hmm. I go to their Friday night group, right? And I'm fine saying that. We don't need to worry about confidentiality there. And they would go, and every time they're like, we will not approach you on the street and say hi to you unless you specifically tell us that's okay. And that's the rule for everyone. You do not approach anyone you've seen there unless they specifically tell you it's okay. You don't say hi. You don't do it. You just pretend you mm-hmm. do not do not know them. Do not know them. Well, and okay. I think that's like a okay. really good way to do it. Because one, it makes everyone feel comfortable. And like if they're fine being approached, and they're fine being approached, and you can approach them if they if they say that. But if they aren't, and they're like with them when that, and they aren't able to be like approached and be like waved to and deal with all of that, then you don't do that. And I think it's just a super good way they start every group with that. They're like, this is the rule here. This is what's happening. You can leave if you don't like that rule. I think also, like, as an ally in, like, to your peers or to your friends or whoever it is, um, other things, like, understanding the difference between talking to someone about their pronouns or gender or whatever in a group versus alone. Because yeah. it's very different. And some people who are really, like, trying their best to be allies will like be in a group of people and they remember you know oh I remember one time my friend said it's good to ask people's pronouns and then they and then they turn to the person in the group who they think might be trans and say what are your pronouns instead of what is everybody's pronouns yeah or like and that's something that's like while you think you're being like conscientious and like thoughtful and you're you know asking this person what their pronouns are so that they don't get misgendered and like I understand that there's good intent there Mm -hmm. but um I think people need to understand that either make it a whole group thing or talk to them afterwards Mm -hmm. and be like hey like what do you want me to call you in front of this group of people because that's also something like you can say you can introduce yourself with your pronouns be like hey my name's Oliver I use he him they them and then that like is an invitation for whoever else is with you to say their pronouns and they don't have to if they don't want to or you could just like talk to them outside of the group but I think that's mm-hmm. something that people get confused about a lot because they think they're being allies but like really you're just making yeah. someone uncomfortable and pull them aside to do that just yeah. thing. like yeah. pull them as- don't do it in front of the group yeah so we're running out of time do we have any last thoughts on confidentiality um I don't think we're gonna get to everything on that paper I don't there's so much on that paper. Uh, I don't, I think I'm all set. Um, we've kind of covered a lot of things. Can I see the paper? Um, oh my God. <laughs> um, the paper. I'm just a sec. Um, we kind of have like briefly covered things that, um, but one thing we haven't really talked about is um, gatekeeping. Yeah, we can briefly touch on this. Yeah. Just because we have like eight minutes. I think that would be a good way to end it out because we've pretty much covered everything. And then, yeah, gatekeeping, final thoughts, and we're good. 
So Oliver. So we're talking about gate- gatekeeping in terms of like Just how allies what it can is first, because because there's also there's like gatekeeping and then there's like convenient allyship. Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of a tied together subject. Okay, okay so, so convenient. About- I can talk about convenient allyship because okay. I know a little bit more about that. Convenient allyship is sort of picking and choosing who you're an ally for or when you want to be an ally. So it can also be within the community. So say I am a, uh, a lesbian, but and I'm an ally for all lesbians and uh, gay men, and that's, I'm an ally for them, but I'm not an ally for like trans people. That would be like picking and choosing who you are, mm-hmm. who you're an ally for. And then even if you're not in the community, you're fine people being gay, you're not fine people being trans. Yeah, so you can't like, yeah, I guess. I think that's, that's, yeah, that's a really good. well yeah. way to put it, so yeah. So gatekeeping is more yeah. within the community, right? I don't but know a lot also about there's it. Convenient, convenient allyship also applies to outside the community, and mm-hmm. when we say like making it convenient who you're an ally for, that means like groups of people, that, but that also means like specifically who in your life you're an ally for. Mm-hmm. So like there are some people who say, you know, oh yeah, like, I'm 100% fine with queer people and like I'm an ally like I advocate for their rights mm-hmm. like I'm supportive and everything but then as soon as like their kid comes out they're like whoa 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 mm-hmm. that's not okay like also no longer supportive they're like, of that yeah. kid they're like fine with people being gay who doesn't affect their lives yeah then when it affects when anyone's like a, someone close to them they like freak out yeah but that's something that happens so a lot. convenient allyship or choosing when you're an ally and all of that which is obviously not how you want to be an ally because then you're claiming the title of being an ally without actually being an ally. Yeah. But I really want you to, we have like five minutes. I really want you to explain to me what gatekeeping is really quick. All right. So okay. I'm confused. Gatekeeping kind of relates to, uh, yeah, I think it relates it's to allyship fine. because it's good for them to know. Um, it's good for everyone but to know. Seek knowledge. Gatekeeping within the LGBT plus community essentially means like having these weird like expectations for other people within your community and having these expectations for like what makes you like trans enough or like what it looks like for you to be gay or what it what like a bi person should act like which like none of these things exist like you can Mm -hmm. you can present however you want and like label yourself however you want but there's a lot of stuff like like within the trans community there's all this stuff about like there's a huge one of the main things of like discourse right now in the trans community is like whether or not you need dysphoria to be trans. Mm-hmm. You and it's like don't. First of all, you don't. That's a whole nother episode. Honestly, we could go on about that. Yeah. But the <laughs> point the point of that is that like there are people literally not talking to other trans people at all and dead naming them and telling them they are cis, being like, you are cis. Because and I don't have you are not you. a trans person. Just because because so of their like, personal opinions about like what it means to be trans and mm-hmm. that can also be like outside of the dysphoria debate that can be like if you're a trans guy who presents really feminine then some trans guys then or you might uh, just, just be, other you trans just people be cis. who will go up to you and be like hmm I don't think you're actually trans or there's a lot of like you're representing our community badly because now all these cis people think that trans people are like you know like special Flamboyant. snowflakes who have to like who have all these labels and like will and don't have any dysphoria and there's like all this stuff and it's, it's like we're just putting up walls within our own community when we should be and like we're not being allies each other. in the community like we're not being allies for each other within the community which is something like, that's so important yeah i have to be an ally to you i don't identify the I lo- with a lot of labels you use i still have to be an ally for you because you're in my community yeah and like i still have to be an ally for steve and i still have to like but i just I have to, you have to be an ally for yeah. everyone. You, if, it, if you're in the LGBT community, it doesn't mean you're exempt from being an ally. You still have to be yeah. an ally. Yeah. But, Steve, a lot of any thoughts like, on gatekeeping? Um, I think that even, like, you can for sure, if it's really what floats your boat, I guess, be a part of the community, but also have, like, things against other part of the community. Just don't, just, just don't say anything don't like ruin super it. aggressively because like we mentioned earlier you're not going to change their mind it's who they are and it is who they were meant to be so stop okay. it's not going to happen like you want it to that is too bad <laughs> go live Bye-bye. your life live your life and be happy no one is want like it, i yeah that's okay all there's for just that. like a lot of like the whole yeah i know the whole thing about the queer community is like 
we are the whole this thing community that we're, of like, people allies united by like love, and the point is that we're not. Like, if you stop the, doing the that, you're going to break down the community. I'm trying to keep interrupting you. The point is that we're not judging people and defining people based off their gender, their sexuality, their presentation, their labels. But that's exactly what you're doing when you're telling someone you're not trans enough because of this or like you should present differently because of your identity or like your pronouns aren't valid or whatever it is. Like you're just you're okay. just like the people who are like making comments mm -hmm. about like that about you. Yeah. So. I think that's a good way to end it. And I think, since we've been trying to do this, is quick final thoughts, take away what you want everyone to take away from the episode, like a one sentence, two sentence thing, starting with Steve. Okay. Go. Um, all you beautiful people, yes. Just yes. That's a good takeaway. I, I just... <laughs> Steve's having a moment. Oliver, quick takeaway. Um, I think... My takeaway from this is pretty much the same thing I said at the beginning, but like always be willing to learn and grow and like know your place as an ally, know that you're valued, but like know your place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allies, we absolutely love you. You are fantastic. Thank you so much because you make our lives so much easier and we appreciate you so much. Indeed. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Thank you so much for watching All Things LGBTQ, LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition and we'll see you next month.